Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. This is episode 46 of Lightroom Quick Tips. You know, it goes without saying that Lightroom is a very feature-rich program. There is so much stuff in Lightroom. I use much of it very, very rarely. Well, very recently, I had a client call me and they were looking for a specific type of image. And I knew I had an image that would fit their needs. So I had to search for it in my Lightroom library. And it dawned on me that a lot of people really don't know how to search for an image in their library. And it could be quite a chore if you have a really, really large Lightroom library. But actually there's some very powerful search tools in Lightroom uh, to help you with your search. And I'm gonna show you how to utilize them. So uh, you wanna find a file in Lightroom. What I suggest you do is go to the library module and go up to where it says catalog here we can close down folders go to catalog and click on all photographs so these are going to be all the photographs you have in your lightroom library now you probably won't have like i don't have a filter bar up here and to turn that filter bar on you have to hit the forward slash key once you hit the forward slash key you'll have this filter bar now we could search for a specific image by many different attributes. The first one listed is text. And right now it's defaulting to any searchable field. That's any searchable field that's in the metadata. And it's gonna contain all of these words that are right over here. So if you look at the drop down, you could see you could search by file name, copy name, title, caption, keywords. But I'm gonna search any searchable field and it's gonna contain all these words. I'm only gonna write one word. Uh, since we're on birds, why don't we look for a woodpecker? Okay, and there you are. Now I have two images of woodpeckers, and it's you can see in the keywords, there's woodpecker in the keyword. So that's why those two popped up. So you see, you could search by any text. So if you know you have an image of, let's say, a waterfall, and you know you put in the keyword, you know, that it was a waterfall, you could narrow your search down right at, right here. But Let's say you're a waterfall photographer and you have 10,000 pictures of waterfalls. Well, you can narrow it down even more if you want to. Right next to it is attribute. I'll click on that. And you could see that it is added to this text field. So I'm still searching for waterfalls, but now my attribute has a flagged um, image and neither one of those woodpecker images were flagged so those aren't coming up so you could turn it off and see how they pop back up um, it a rating so let's say you're a waterfall photographer you have 10,000 waterfall images you searched for waterfalls and you know it's a five-star waterfall so you could click that now obviously I didn't rate um, I didn't rate my uh, woodpeckers there so that's how you could search so you could search by your flag whether it's flagged or not what the rating is uh, what the color label is or you could search by what kind this would be all the images that are master photos that that aren't um, copies like um, you know they're the raw files or the JPEGs or you could search for virtual copies or you could search for video now, if you don't want to stack these, see how we're searching text with an attribute? Just turn one off by clicking on it. You see how they're both uh, active by being brighter and these are dimmed? Let's say we don't want to search by text. Just click on that and that'll go away. So we're only going to search by an attribute. Uh, we could do a color code or something like that. So let's say now we could do metadata. And we don't want to search with the attribute also. So we're going to turn that off. All right, so let's go back to text and let's clear our woodpecker here. So we're gonna clear that and we'll turn that off and we're gonna be on all dates, metadata, we're on lenses um, with a label. Let's go with all labels, there we go. So you see we have these columns. You could search by a date. So you know you took an image in 2007, you, know the, you could drill down to the date you took the image if you want, or you could just have all. The camera, you knew you used a Canon EOS 5D Mark III. You could drill down to that and you know pick it that way. You knew you used a specific lens. Well, let's say I just bought a Fujifilm XF 
16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 lens. I just bought this lens. So click on that, I have 30 images. That's all I've ever taken with that lens so far. So I could right away find it by lens if I wanted. We go back and do all. Label is inter interesting. A lot of people don't understand that. And I never used it, but I'm going to start using it. Um, as a demonstration, I put a label in here, Harris. So we'll just click on that, and there's one of our woodpeckers, all right? What the label is, there is a, um, in your metadata, here, let me organize this a little better. In here, there's a field called label, and see how I wrote Harris? So let's say you're a wedding photographer and you're doing a Harris wedding, and you could label, put labels on the, um, all the, when you're importing the um, images, do an import um, preset, uh, name them all Harris. So you have all the Harris images, and that way you could easily search for them. Um, of course, you'd probably put them in their own folder and things like that, but sometimes stuff gets moved around and you lose track of it. Or if you sold images and you want to keep track of who you sell them or how you sell them, you sell prints. So you might be able to uh, write a sold print as a label. Uh, or maybe you sell it online, uh, another group online. So you write sold online, then, you know, a digital image or something like that. So you could keep track of labels. So it labels something you come up with. I just wrote Harris here. You could write anything here. So I could write, um, I could write um, Miller. Okay. And then see to the right, there's this little uh, right facing arrow. You just click on that and that named it Miller now see all right so you could search by label and we take it away if you want to clear the label then just hit that right facing arrow and now there's no labels at all as you could see there now if you hover over any of these uh, columns you'll see that there's a drop down and we could change if we don't want to search by labels anymore we could search by lenses or all these different things so aspect ratios I could search by aspect ratios. You see, I have a number that have tons of portraits. I have a lot of landscapes. I have 142 square images. If you want to look at the square images, you want to look at the landscape images, things like that. You could go over to the far right here and you could add another column. So we could add a column and we could call this column, uh, like, I don't know, anything. Uh, copyright status so you know I have seven public domain photos I have a number of photos in here if I want to delete one of these columns I just go back to this little drop down and I remove this column just like that so we have all these different um, columns that we could utilize to search the metadata um, so you know it, it's very very powerful you could, you know, location. I took some in Allentown, downtown, first word, you know, like that. So you have an image that you need to find and you know you took it on, let's say, the Lower East Side. You you make sure that that's in the metadata when you um, imported the file or maybe during your processing, you make sure that you add that to the processing and then you'll be able to more easily find it. Um, you could use all these in combination too. So you knew you took uh, an image in, in 2012 and you used an NEX7 and you knew you used that lens and unknown location. So there's no location in there, but you could search by something else. So you could really, you know, really drill this down. And um, like I said, it it's really has a lot of powerful search capabilities. And if you don't want to search at all, just click none. And all your images will be there. And if you want to get rid of this filter bar, you just hit that forward slash key again. And it's gone. So that's some tips on how you could search for an image in Lightroom. I hope that helps. Uh, if you guys you know, know you have a specific image and you know you took it on a certain date or used a certain camera and lens and stuff, this will better help you find it. All right, that's it. I thank everyone who watches my videos, I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.